the idol mental seeing to perceive or know, right, is how Timothy came to trusting and relying faith in Christ through the prophetic scriptures. It says that in 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 16. This is also the way, so if you read it in Greek, this is also the way uh, Paul describes his focus on Christ. Verses for all this. Paul's prosuke, prosuke conversational prayer, dialogue, right, it's a dialogue, is that Christians will have the eyes of their heart, you get that, the eyes of their heart, enlightened or illuminated as a result of receiving the spirit of wisdom and of revelation. And how, what, how is this? By the means, it's the date of case of instrument, the genuine full experiential relational epinosis knowledge of Christ. And that is in Ephesians 1.18. And so you can go out there and you see Ephesians 1.18 and Bible Hub, and you can see that's what he says in order you may know, and it comes from maybe Ephesians 1.19. Maybe it's 117. Let me go look at that. Yes, it comes from the knowledge of him and in context, and that's verse 17. The Father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation by the knowledge of him. So really, it's the knowledge of God, the Father, right? So I'll correct that, the Father. And that is in Ephesians 1.17. I'm taking both verses together and pulling it together for you. The Father idomentally sees to perceive or know the mind of his own spirit. And there's verses for all this. It's no wonder that God promises that now all God's people would mentally see to perceive or know him under the completely different and kind new covenant. But now... This knowledge absolutely will no longer be taught by any man from the greatest to the least, as in the Old Covenant, but taught by God, here we go, now from the least to the greatest. And that's Hebrews 8.11, citing Jeremiah 31.34, which is a key verse. It is a key verse. Wow. So you want to see that. You want to see that. That is... That is a key verse. This is the promise. It's very misleading for many Bibles to simply translate Ido as knowing or understanding because it has very little to do with logical, rational processing or comprehension uh, like other words for understanding, which is sunesis, connect the dots, uh, understanding requires if you read and study the Bible. This, this is a rational, uh, logical, inductive reasoning. That's what it is. Connect Sunesis is an inductive understanding uh, or reasoning that is required if you read and study the Bible. But had... But instead, right, Ido has more to do, right? Ido has more to do, this is the thing, you would never know it from English, to do with seeing mental pictures in order to perceive or know. Something that God can easily place in anybody's mind. These pictures, right? Right? Mental images. These images are something that God can easily place 
in anybody's minds, even the uneducated, right, least among you. And the little children, right? Even the uneducated, because this is before they are able to read. The words for little children uh, mean before reading age. Infants, still breastfeeding even in, in some cases. He says, if you search carefully, you will find that nowhere in the New Testament is there a hint of more grama letters collected into graphe scripture to be given by God. Instead, the promise for both Jew and Gentile Christians was that they will be taught by God. Right? They will be taught by God. First, directly by Jesus, the living Logos, right? Communicator, right? That was the living Logos, communicator, Word of God. He is the Word of God. See, it's not, it's not writings anymore. It's Jesus. And then after his resurrection, by Christ's Spirit, he says, he's going to do it. By Christ's Spirit, the one teacher who would live in them, right? He says, I'm going to be inside you, right? At Pentecost's outpouring of Christ's Spirit, the first precedent-setting sermon of the church age, right? Last days. That's the last days. He says, in the last days, was Peter, who said in Acts chapter 2, 15 through 18, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. I will pour out my spirit. I'm abbreviating this. Your sons and daughters shall actually prosper, prophesy. Your men shall actually envision visions. Right? And dream dreams. And he sums up all this. They shall actually prophesy. So there's some great ver uh, notes on this. I'll, I won't go through them. You can just go through those. There's absolutely no mention that God's plan was to continue to include reading, studying, memorizing, teaching, and debating Old Testament scripture. Or that God would write more grama letters of it. Instead, we have Jesus earlier saying that that this, what was he saying? That this promise, that this promise of my father, this that this is saying that this is the promise of my father I am sending upon you. Right? This is the promise. What is the promise? When you are clothed with enabling power and to wait for the promise of the father you have heard from me, and you will see you will receive enabling power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And coupled, you will be my witnesses or testifiers to the ends of the earth or ages, just as Jesus promised in John 15, 26, where he said, The Spirit of Truth, the Paracletos, means the alongside, close beside, right, as a counselor. Whom I will send you, he will bear witness or testify about me. So, it's the Holy Spirit. This is the promise. So, you can just see promise and, and just trace that use of promise. Earlier in John 4.10 through 14.24, Jesus said, This is the grace gift of God. I will give you living water. See, that's I will give you not a water out of a, a well, a spring of water welling up to Zoe, genuine life, everlasting. God is spirit. And so those who worship him must worship by the means of singular spirit and coupled singular truth. They're coupled together. So these, it's the spirit of truth. He says this all the time. It's the spirit of truth. Well, who, who is the truth? Jesus. He says, I am the truth. And also, because he's, he's standing right in front of this woman saying, he's probably going, and the Spirit and the truth, right? Whoever has, tr tr here it goes, whoever has trusting, relying faith in me, out of his heart will flow 
rivers of living water. Now, we got to understand Jews used heart, mind, and inner being interchangeably. They just used different Greek words interchangeably. Will flow rivers of living water, which Jesus said about the Spirit that would be given after Christ was glorified, right? This started to happen, started to happen at Pentecost when Peter says, this is from the Father. This, what was happening, right? This, that was happening. There was a lot of stuff going on. Is from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. He has poured out that you are what he has poured out that you you are seeing uh, or as you see you you are, he has poured out I'm sorry what <laughs> you are seeing and hearing see what was it what was it that you are seeing and hearing it's the Holy Spirit that is the promise of the Father and this is the grace gift of the Holy Spirit for this promise he says is for you and your children, and for all who are far off. Does that include us? Yes, it says all who are far off. Somehow much of the church has lost sight of who the promise was to be. They think it's the perfect coming is the Bible, but all through the scripture, the perfect is in the masculine, and it's not in the neuter, it's masculine, and it refers to Jesus. He is the perfect, right? The complete one. And so you can do a Bible study on that too. Somehow, so so somehow much of the church has lost sight of who the promise was to be and settled for more what's, for more what's of scripture writings, right? Scripture writings. So they said, oh, that was the promise, more Bible. So I got some reflections here. To consider and we'll look at this some more here's some reflections some meditations that I've put down here as I was going through this quite a long time ago as Christians or Christian musicians the promise prophesied in the Old Testament for the New Testament sure was not more grama writings collected into excuse me grafe scripture the Catholic Church was the first in 2008 AD to declare any New Testament writings as Scripture, despite the objections of previous bishops. Right? Their own bishops, they objected. No, the promise was instead the Holy Spirit's enabling power to variously uh, see God and His will, using words like Ido. Horao, horasis, aphorao, optonomai, katatripsomai, etc. For observing, beholding, mentally seeing, to perceive, discerning, in order to genuinely, experientially, relationally, epigonosco, know. So there's a lot of words. And you can, uh, we've seen a lot of these. The first sermon for the entire church age tells us God's plan of communicating to his people now is for all of his men and women servants to prophesy via visions and dreams. This is God's intention. There is no mention of anything else. Do you realize this is the sermon? This is the sermon that started the church age. We are... Are, why are we adding to God's plans? This is God's plan. And we, we are dropping back to an Old Testament plan. But he has a new plan. If the Jews perfected Bible study for 800 years, and God said it got them no closer to actually knowing God than the Gentiles did. Right. Wow. He said this, you know, you're not a light to the Gentiles. Isn't it insane to think that Christians are going to do better <clears throat> still supposing, this is what Jesus said, you're supposing or opinionating that in the scriptures we may hold take hold of Zoe genuine life everlasting. 
but they testify of me, yet you refuse to come to me. Are we also going to miss their whole point, which was to have a direct personal relationship with the Messiah? That's their whole point. Once we have the person, are we also going to ongoingly refuse to come to me? So the person's already here. Once we have the person arrive, once the, I should just say, once the person has arrived, see, Jesus arrived, right? <coughs> He's already arrived. Are we also going to ongoingly refuse to come to me, Jesus says, but instead go back to our Bible study? Even if Jesus said the secrets of kingdom are kept hidden, <clears throat> from these wise and understanding ones, why are we going back? Why? Why are we going back? Now, Paul always says, why are you going back? Why are you returning again to a yoke of slavery? The, the writings were enslaved them. It enslaved them. It imprisoned us as the scripture has imprisoned everyone under sin. Wow, do we really want to do this? Why are we going back to learning about God from the what's? The what's of paper and letters. Paper, right? With letters on them. That's, that's what they were had. You know, that's what they were studying. When we have the who of the parakletos, one teacher, Jesus said, one teacher, so that we can all be taught by God. Why? So that we can all be taught by God. Why? Why do we go back? I don't know. It's insane. It's a religious insanity to think that we're going to get different results than the people who were experts at this, who made it their livelihood for 800 years. It somehow... We're going to best them. <laughs> we're going to do something better than them. Uh, we're going to get better at Bible study. <laughs> no, that's, that's not the way it works. And uh, Jesus like, was really warning them. Yeah, you guys are really missing the point here. I am the point. I'm standing right in front of you. You don't even need any more. He would have been really happy. Uh, hey, you, Mr. Bible study scholar guy, uh, I want you to put your book down, you know, I want you to come and follow me. You're going to learn everything you need to know, one-on-one, -on -one, personally. You just need to put your books down. The book was to get you to me, and you still want to go back to the book. That's kind of stupid. You just need to put your book down, and you need to spend time with me. You need to follow me. You need to do what I told you to do in the New Covenant, right, is the Holy Spirit. The New Covenant is the Holy Spirit of Jesus. You're not going to get the Holy Spirit of Jesus looking at books, right? It ain't going to happen. There's a whole new way to do this. <laughs> All right? I opened the Holy of Holies. I tore the curtain aside. You know, you can walk right into the Holy of Holies, just like a high priest would. Now you can go boldly before the throne by the means of the Holy Spirit. Just It's all about learning how to come to me by faith through the veil... <laughs> Torn when he got right crucified, the, the veil was torn. Now we go right into the Holy Holies, right into the presence of God, boldly, through the name and authority of Jesus. Not anything that we do. It's his name and authority. And we trust him. That's that trusting, relying, the depending faith. That's what pisses means. And we just go right boldly before the throne. And it's all the seeing, a kuo hearing seeing with our eyes, the eyes of our heart, mentally seeing the perceiver. No, this is all prophetic, right? Visions and dreams. It's getting back to the way a few prophets in the whole Old Testament, that's how they knew God. They didn't know God by reading writings. You know, they collect, the, the, the Bible study guys collected these writings long after the fact, right? And even though they killed them all. Even though they killed all the prophets, they collected their writings. Is that, like, really kind of crazy, isn't it? What, what's that about? But during the time that they were there, they didn't listen to these 
prophets. They're like, I want to study my Bible. They were reading old letters. And then a prophet comes along and says, put the book down, man. You should be following me out there in the desert or wherever he was. You should be listening to the voice of God. You should be seeing the thoughts of God. And that's what they were saying. The prophets were saying this. How dare you diss our book, the, the, the writings of Moses. How dare you tell us to turn our back on studying and all this stuff that we were, you know, we were all we know how to do for 800 years. How dare you? So they killed the prophets. Go read the prophets and how they're talking to the Bible students. It ain't good. <laughs> it isn't good. Just like Jesus was talking to the Bible students. It ain't good. It's not, hey, he wasn't commending them. <laughs> he, oh, Ray, way to go. I'm glad you get so into this. No, nope, he was not. He said, you suppose you opinionate, right? It's, but it's wrong. It's erroneous opinion that you have hold, hold, right? It's an erroneous vision. They were shutting up vision. They shut up vision, but he's saying you need to have vision. You need to have prophecy. You need to follow in my footsteps, right? And he was the prophet, by the way. Moses called him the prophet. Jesus is the prophet. You know, prophets beget prophets. They don't beget Bible students. You don't see any prophet telling their prophet coming up, Elijah and Elisha. You don't see them saying, oh, now I want you to read this. I want you to debate this. I want you to study this. I want you to write this down. Nope. It's not about that at all. You never see that kind of training. So it's all about getting in the presence of God, seeing, hearing, feeling, seeing, hearing, feeling, seeing, hearing, feeling, seeing, hearing, feeling. All right. So I hope we're learning that after seeing this so many times, hearing this so many times, and hopefully feeling this so many times. So God bless you. I look forward to your comments right below. Okay, bye-bye.